Hi, this is Stephen here from Share Navigator, and today I'm going to talk to you about stochastics in the world of technical analysis. So we're on the finance.yahoo.com website. If you're looking to get free charts, you don't want to subscribe to a charting package or you don't have an online broker, this is a great place to get real-time data and a very good charting package as well. So that's what we're going to demonstrate stochastics on for you today. So we're looking here at a quote here for the S&P 500 or the ETF for the SPY and we're going to click on the full screen here on the charts. So you can see here at the minute what we have here is a candlestick one year chart for the SPY. So each candle here represents one day's trading for the stock on that particular day. It includes the high, the low, the open, the close. And what we're going to do now is add in a stochastic. So we're going to click on indicators. We're going to scroll down to stochastics and we're going to click on stochastics. So this is like the default settings it has for it, which is the, the period is really the look back period in order for calculating the stochastic. So it's 14 day look, look back period. So in other words, it's going back over the last 14 days of data to calculate this particular stochastics. So later on in this video, I'm actually going to go through the calculation in detail with you to show you how to actually get the value for it. But we're happy with these settings and we click on save. So just for now, all I want to really do is show you, you know, here's your stochastics down at the bottom and you still have your price chart up here above it. So we're just going to kind of widen this out a little bit. And all I'm going to do is, is share with you some snippets of information that I think you're going to need and how useful stochastics can be. So the first thing I'd say to you is this. Stochastics, in my opinion, only work in sideways trending markets. So if you're in an out-and-out -out bull market where share prices just keep rising above and going through uh, resistance, stochastics um, isn't very useful for you in that scenario and vice versa when you're in a bear market when stocks are falling heavily. Um, and it goes outside of the support range, then stochastics are pretty useless as well, in my opinion. Other people may disagree. Um, so what you're really looking for is to find uh, kind of stocks that are trending sideways, basically. And that's where you can actually make a lot of money using stochastics and swing trading stocks. So that's what we're talking about here. So, for example, here's common areas of support with SPY. It's touched down here three times in the last couple of months and it's bounced off and then gone back up again. So that's what we would consider strong support. And then on the upside here, you can see at about 280, where it is right now, actually, uh, it's kind of, it's met a bit of resistance. This is the third time it's gone up to, to 280 and hasn't quite got through yet. So let's assume we're still in this sideways trending market. So this is where we can get stochastics to work for us. So let me give you the rule of thumb here. So stochastics is based on a scale of 0 to 100. So that can be 0% to 100% or just 0 to 100. Whatever way you want to interpret it yourself. And the simple rules of thumb are this. When a stock gets down to the 0 to 20 range down here, it's considered oversold. And there may be a buying opportunity ahead. And the buy signal comes when the stochastic rises above 20. So there's your buy signal. And if we looked up at the chart here to get the corresponding price movement you can see price has actually moved up that particular time so the indicator worked here then if we look up here where do we get sell signals well the sell signal comes when the stochastic gets above 80 and then drops back below it so here's your first sell signal and as you can see the share price fell but it only fell for a couple of days before it reversed course and went back up again we got another sell signal here and sure enough the share price did fall right back into the oversold area. Then we got another buy signal on this particular day and we know the share prices rose. Then we got another sell signal and the share prices did indeed fall. And since then we've been kind of up here in this upper range of the stochastics. So the simple rules of stochastics are when the share price is or when the stochastic is below 20 there may be a buying opportunity and that only occurs when the stochastic rises back above the 20 line. And the sell signal comes when the stochastics above 80 and drops back below the 80 line. And remember, this only works in sideways trending markets. So now what I'm going to do with you is share with you how stochastics are actually calculated. So what I'm going to do now is pull data for the last month for SPY and actually go through the formula with you. And 
I think it's really important that you understand how stochastics are calculated. I see too many people trading on charts alone, whether it be through Forex, through stocks or options or whatever it is, and they really haven't got a clue what the indicator is, how it's calculated. And I think when you understand it, you'll understand the benefits of the indicator, but you'll also understand the limitations of it as well. So that's what I'm going to go through with you right now. So what you're looking at here now is 22 days of data. We've got um, data from May the 15th right up to June the 14th um, for the SPY. And the four pieces of information that we have are the open, the high, the low, and the close. Now for stochastics, we don't need the opening data. We don't need the open price. It, it, it doesn't come into the formula. So let me explain the formula first of all, and then I'll go through a calculation separately for you. So the formula for stochastics is the current closing price for the stock minus the lowest price over the look back period. So for example, we have a look back period here of 14 days. So all you do there is go through all the low prices for the last 14 days, find the lowest price. So the first part of the formula is the closing price minus the lowest low price over the last 14 days. And then you would divide that answer by the highest price over the last 14 days minus the lowest price over the last 14 days. And you will get a decimal number for that. And to get it into the stochastic full number, we simply multiply it by 100. So let me show you again. Let me go through an example here. So we're going to go down to day 14. We're going to first of all find some of the information we really need in order to make our calculation. So we already have the close. But we need to find the lowest low over the last 14 days. So we go through the low prices over the last 14 days. And you can see here that 267.76 is the lowest price over the last 14 days. So we'll just put that in here in this particular box here. Now, if you're using Excel or Google Sheets, a quick way to do that is just to type in equals the min, MIN for minimum. And then just select this range here. And that will just pull out that price for you. Then we're going to go through all the high prices over the last 14 days and find the highest high. And we can see that the highest high over the last 14 days was 275.19. So now we start getting into our formula. We'll calculate the first part of the formula, which is the current closing price of 274.90 minus the lowest low. And we know what the lowest low is 267.76. So the answer there is 714. The second part of our formula is the highest high. We know the highest high is 275.19 minus the lowest price for the last 14 days, which is 267.76, and that will give us 743. So your stochastic is simply your current close minus the lowest low divided by the highest high over the last 14 days minus the lowest low. And you get 0 0.96. Multiply it out by 100 to get it into a full number and you get 96.097. So that's how your stochastic is calculated. So just if you think about the logics of this, right? If these numbers get closer and closer, this number gets higher and higher. One divided by the other, if they're very close, you're nearly getting one. So all this, all stochastics are really telling you is that if the number is high, is that the recent momentum in the stock or the recent closing prices are actually near the highest high. That's really what it's telling you. Um, and if the stochastic was low, it's telling you actually the current closing price is actually way off the highest high over the last 14 days. That's really all you're getting from stochastics here. It's over a period of time people recognize patterns and, and identified buy and sell signals um, from the stochastic formula. The original um, methodology for stochastics was actually to look for reversions in share prices. It wasn't this out and out buy or sell signified other uses for stochastics. So remember, that's all stochastics is. It's just telling you the momentum, the recent momentum is either strong or it's either weak versus the, the, the lowest low over the last number of period of time. That's all it's telling you. So we went into June 5th. We go through the same thing, you can see the number keeps changing. So that's that's how stochastics are created. 
Now, if we go back to our stochastics chart here, you can see there's two lines. So one is the out and out stochastic itself, and one is usually a three day moving average based off that. So that's all we've got here when we come in here. It's a three day stochastic moving average. So it's just taking the previous three days and averaging it out. So back to our formula and a reminder. Stochastics are just giving you an idea of where the momentum is in the stock in the most recent trading days relative to the lowest low. That's all it's giving you. And it's not giving you any more than that. And that's why I am saying to you that it's really only beneficial to you in a sideways trending market. And always remember, a trend can change. So even though we're in this sideways trending market with the S&P 500, this can break out to the upside and then all of a sudden we're out of the sideways trend. So when these stochastics get into these overbought conditions, they're not out and out buy signals. You've got to wait for your signal or sell signals. You've got to wait till your sell signal comes by the stochastic crossing back below the 80. And vice versa, when it rises above the 20, that's your buy signal. And it always only works in sideways trending markets. It's really good to use in, in conjunction with swing trading. And we have a little formula here in Chair Navigator that identifies possible swing trading opportunities with other indicators so next up we're going to talk about bollinger bands next week and we're going to show you how we combine both of those to give us some entry and exit entry and exit signals to be able to go and maybe swing trade a stock for a number of days or even minutes okay this is stephen from share navigator i hope you enjoyed the video on stochastics I hope it hasn't been too complicated for you but if you are using technical analysis to trade stocks you really do need to know what's behind the calculation.